You are now tuning in to Boss Lady Talk, KJ TV, where no subject is off limits. Shout out to all of my VIPs and welcome, welcome, welcome to all of my new subscribers. So you guys, this is story time. And today we are going to talk about the conjoined twins, Millie and Christine McCoy. I found this story really interesting, okay? Especially for them to be Afro-American and to be conjoined together. I like stories like this, you guys, because I find it very interesting. I come from a family of twins, not conjoined, which makes it more interesting, which makes me want to know more about it. So you guys, these two are sisters conjoined by the pelvic kit. And before we get into the story, let me just tell you guys more about them. So what makes conjoined twins are so interesting it's not only their body mouth formation, but the rarity of their occurrence on how they were born. They were conjoined at birth. And even throughout history, you guys, you see once every 50 to 100,000 births, meaning that they make up 1% of identical twins, not fraternal twins, but identical twins. When identical twins do not fully separate from a single egg, then conjoining happens, which means they start to be conjoined. Sometimes it could be at the hip, the waist, the head. You just never know. Scientists are uncertain why a full separation does not occur in each cases. When this happens, so they find it difficult to study in depth. So I'm going to share with you guys um, a few pictures of Millie and Christine. Okay. They refer to them as the two-headed sisters, basically. Yeah, you guys. Back in them days, the respect factor was it cool at all. Now, you guys, it reads right here, conjoining is not just limited to humans, but we also see it in fish, reptiles, primates, birds, and other mammals as well. So, to see it in animals is one thing, but to see it in humans is another. I mean, when people out in the street, of course, people are going to look and watch because, again, they're really not used to seeing something like that. Well, at least I'm not. But we know it does happen. Conjoined twins cannot be different sexes. 70% are mostly females. So, you guys... um, let me tell you guys about these twins, okay? The two-headed nightingales. This is then when they was little, you guys. They was conjoined at the pelvic. So, you guys, um, this is Christine and Millie McCoy. They was born in July 11, 1851 the eighth child of slaves belonging to a man named Jabez McCoy, who was a, former of a, a farmer on a plantation and was about 10 miles from what is now called Whiteville. You guys, this is them in the x-ray, you guys. Okay? To show you guys where they are conjoined at. The twins who taught who, the twins who thought of themselves as one person were joined at the lower back and shared one pelvis. 
Millie and Christine had two hearts, two brains, and a cold, and could carry on conversation with two different people at the same daggone time. Her mother, too, thought of Millie Christine as one child and treated the twins as such. Now, why would the mother think of them as one child and treated them as such? I don't know. Viewed as curiosity, the girls was kidnapped twice before they were six years old. Jabez McCoy, the plantation owner, figured to capitalize on them and enter them into an agreement, you guys, with another landowner owner to split the proceeds. So you know what they did, y'all. Put them in some kind of display in front of a bunch of people and charged 10 cent back in them days to watch them perform. Because apparently, Millie and Christine traveled to Europe. They sang and recited poetry. They wrote. So they was very um, talented. They even had an acquaintance with Queen Victoria when they traveled to England. In the early 30s, the twins returned to Columbus County and settled on a farm where they were born after inheriting Jabez McCoy's plantation and their father who had purchased it. In 1911, Millie contracted tuberculosis and died a year later. And on October the 8th, 1912, Christine died 12 hours later before her twin sister. Wow. And y'all, this is just a few pictures of them as they growing up. As you can see, they dress really nice. Okay, they was very talented and they say that they were also very, very well known. Okay, I'm sure that they got they they clothes um tailor made to fit their bodies. And this is them as they gotten older, you guys. As you can see, they are conjoined identical twins. Conjoined identical twins. But y'all, this is a this right here is what get me. Because when people see somebody that's different than them, that's when the name calling starts. Now they refer to them as twin freaks dies. One body, two heads, four arms, and four legs. But they stood around and watched them sing, do poetry, and the whole nine yards. Okay? And this is what they get known as once they pass away. If that ain't some BS. I don't know what it is. These are the girls' um, grave sites right here. And yeah, you guys, Millie and Christine born July 5th, 1851, Columbus County, NC. And you guys can read the rest. But I really found this story really interesting because I really do like to hear about twins and identical twins and fraternal twins and uh, quadruplets and stuff like that. So being that we are already talking about twinning, all right, I just felt like this would be a good opportunity to talk about these Afro-American black conjoined twins who came around in the slavery days. And you know what, you guys? They say, now, they say that identical twins I don't know if this is a myth or whatever, can feel and, you know, react, you know, when it comes to twins. But one thing I could say is, is when it comes to fraternal twins is that 
There is no telepathy or nothing like that going on. But sometimes you do seem to think alike or sporadically say something at the same time. You know, that that does happen. And, you know, most twins, not all, but most twins are very, very close. So, and I know that in my family we are. And they're very, very close. And, you know, because you do have twins, some twins that not at close at all, don't do things together, don't speak to each other. Like, that's really weird. So imagine if you had somebody that you had to spend every day, every single moment with. What if one wanted to date and the other one didn't? You know what I'm saying? They had a lot. These two could join twins. I'm sure they had a lot of boundaries. Uh, well, I ain't even going to say boundaries because they always in somebody's space. But, you know, I'm sure they respected each other. You know, they had a lot to talk about when one wanted to go this way, the other one wanted to go that way. One one, you know what I'm saying? So for them to be conjoined at the hip, sometimes, you know, I just, you know, reading this story, I just wonder, like, you know, did they both, what if, um, okay, because they said that they was kidnapped, right? So apparently they wouldn't have had no choice, but the story also um, um, talks about when, you know, them days was over and how they lived their they best life. But at the end of the day, they had a lot of decisions to make. <laughs> That's all I can say. And that takes a lot of getting along. Because what if you could join twins and you like some of them other twins that don't get along, but you attach to this person for the rest of your life? That could be a terrible feeling. I couldn't even imagine, y'all. I wouldn't even want to imagine. But, yeah, when I was listening to this, reading up on this story, I was like, wow. You know? It says Millie and Christine McCoy were conjoined twins who were connected at the pelvis. They were born in slavery in 1851 and sold in order to travel around a B exhibit exhibited exhibit. I'm sorry, you guys, in freak shows mm, 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 mm. around the world. In 1863, they were finally freed by the Emancipation Proclamation. Thank you. And when they were in their 30s, they moved back to the farm where they were born, which their father had brought and left them. And only then, y'all, they were able to live their best life. Now, it doesn't say whether they got married or not, but, you know, you can still be conjoined twins and date now. Don't get it twisted. You can still be conjoined twins and date. And I think I might be covering some more stories on different ethnic groups, but still, like, be twinning and stuff. Because it's, it's really interesting how, you know, it takes a lot of talking to each other, okay, when you are connected to each other. See, that's not like just being a, a identical twin and not conjoined or a fraternal twin and not conjoined. But once you are a conjoined to each other, that's some compromising. What do you guys think? Because at the end of the day, they still share part of their body. Wow. I wonder if they wanted to get separated. Could they got separated? Being that it was from the pelvis area. 
Hmm. But yeah, you guys, these here's some of the pictures. And for them to be conjoined, I'm I'm thinking, because you know what they do say is always one good one, and it's always the opposite of that one. You know, one might be more big headed than the other one. You know, but for all them years that they was conjoined to each other and then freed as a slave, these women look very well dressed. Okay, they also said that they was very known. So whatever they was doing around that time, around this time, because if I move this banner, you guys, it'll say that it was 10 cent admission was 10 cent back then. So I guess back then, y'all, 10 cent went a long way. Okay? Because I'm sure back in them days, the clothes was being tailored made. And again, they look very, very well dressed. Okay? So it's very interesting to see these Afro-American women that turned out to be very successful. And even back then, y'all, they called them names. So we going all the way back to what? 1912? Or even before then, so no, that's when she, 1911, they contracted um, tuberculosis. But even before 1851, when they was born, you know, and was old enough to grow up, people were going to judge them anyway. Okay? Because anybody that's, that's different from the next person, people like to judge. Okay? But again, why they why they thought they was kicking these ladies back in? Guess what they was doing? Getting paid. And they say that these two sisters right here was well off when they passed away. It's just so happened that now that they're going, people think of them like this. But when they was alive, it was a whole nother story. But anyway, rest in peace to Millie and Christine. And I was, it was really interesting reading up about them. Okay? I mean, wow. You talk about twins who were joined at the lower back and shared one pelvis. They had their own hearts, their own brains, and can carry on a very articulate conversation on two different occasions. Okay? That's all I'm saying. But anyway, you guys, leave me a comment in the comment section. I'm sure a lot of you guys know about twins and fraternal twins and how all twins are not the same. And all twins aren't close like they should be, which I find that to be weird. Like, who's not close with a twin? You know, I, I don't think there should be no type of jealousy when it comes to twins. Because after all, that should be your bestie. I know mine is. Okay, hell. One of my... um other siblings that are twins we all think we all the twins together okay we do we so close in age so and then the ones that turned out not to be twins child they wish they was twins so they act like twins <laughs> so you know we all close so i'm sure these two right here were very very close Okay, especially they really had to do things together. 
Whereas a identical twin or a fraternal twin, they have choices. But even as a fraternal twin or identical twin, most of twins like doing twin stuff together. Now, all the ones I know, even the ones I went to school with, they real close. They like doing stuff together. You know, they like the little twin shit going on. You know, but that's all cute when you little. But when you get older, you know, you start to have your own identity. You might want to do your hair different. You might want to have a different type of clothing. Some might like bright colors. Others might like earth tones, child. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you do have to treat people differently. Now, I don't know why the article said that the mother treated them as one. Because it's clearly they only attached at the pelvic. But technically, they should have been treated as individuals, regardless. If they have their own brain and pumping their own heart, then scientifically, they are conjoined twins. In reality, you have to treat them like individuals. Because I'm sure they, they, and I'm quite sure they both think like two individual people that share a pelvic together. All right, you guys. So leave me a comment in your comment section about your thoughts about these Afro American twins, Millie and Christine. And what about the way the people treated them and put it in the newspaper after they passed away? You know? And again, back then, just to see them perform was 10 daggone cent. So from 10 cent to 2022, child, you know times has definitely changed. But anyway, you guys, leave me your comments in the comment section. Enjoy your 2022. Thanks for tuning in to this story time about Millie and Christine McCoy. And I will see you all in my next video. I just want to make sure that I put up this disclaimer under the section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Please read. And I will see you all in my next video. Welcome VIPs and see you later. Deuces.